We had another unusual request to come in from one of our subscribers, and that is um, we're requesting a quick tip about gamut mapping. Now this person says, I know what it is, but I don't seem to grasp what it's good for. Well, maybe I can give a little bit of clarity on both of those. For those of you who have never heard of gamut ma mapping, it is a way to create color schemes. Simply that, uh, whenever you create any kind of color scheme, that's your gamut. Any, any selection of colors that you have on your palette from which you're going to develop a painting is your gamut. To do gamut mapping, you're setting up a, particular, uh, setting up a set of particular limitations on your color. So we're well, starting here with uh, my little color wheel. You notice that I have the color wheel, this color wheel designed so that it goes from the most saturated hues in this direction to more neutral hues as they get closer to the center. They get more neutral. And what that means is that uh, in the opposite, on the opposite side, a complement a complement is being added in, causing it to be more neutral. Now, why that is important is that when you're doing uh, gamut mapping, you're including all of these uh, as well as whatever colors you choose for your scheme. So I'm going to show you the simplest first. Now one of the simplest color schemes is a triad. It means you choose three colors and those are the three colors you work with. And maybe you're going to add white to lighten, uh, but as far as the hues go, those are the three colors you're going to work with. So that's a, that's a triad, and they're arranged in a triangle. Usually they are equal distance on the color wheel. Well, let me just show you. Let's uh, arrange a triad right here. And let's just pull this yellow, yellow, red, and blue. There's the primary triad. Those yellow, red, and blue have traditionally uh, been considered our primary colors. So triad, yellow, red, blue. Now, what that means is all the colors, all the possibilities between yellow, blue, and red mixed together and their different values. This doesn't show the values. This does show the reduce, a reduction in intensity. And it does show the hues, but it doesn't show the value. So you have all these mixtures in here along with the white to raise the value and then darker versions of these to lower the values. So that's, that, that is your gamut. The mapping is this. This is the map right here. This triangular shape is the map. And that makes this whole thing gamut mapping. Now I'm going to show you a, a little bit more expansive uh, possibility. And this, this will show you a little bit better the combinations of possibilities that you have. And I'll pretty much stick with this one as I move along. But you can see here, if I set up this as a primary triad, now you can see all, all the different possibilities that you have from the most neutral of each of those colors, on including even some of the ones that are in between because of, them, of their mixtures. So you, this plus this equals all this. This plus this equals all this, and so on. Plus, you get the uh, the get the neutrality. So that is a triangle or an equilateral triangle gamut. And you can see, just pull this off like this. Okay, now you can see how you can turn this in any direction and make a selection of hues from which you're going to develop your entire painting. So if we stop right there, then this I can answer the question: Why or what for? I thought that was kind of cute. The reason for gamut mapping is to have color harmony. Because when you make a, a um, logical color scheme, a color scheme based on the color wheel, uh, in relationship to two or three colors that have relation, some sort of relationship to each other, and those are the only ones you use, you're going to have, most likely, you're going to have color harmony. So that is the main reason why we do uh, the gamut mapping or the color schemes. Now, uh, I want to show you other possibilities, though. 
that's just the triad. I'm going to put this one back up because it, I think it's clearer to see, although we don't see all the possibilities, but you will know you will know that all those possibilities of color mixes are different uh, different possibilities of colors uh, as to their saturation um, and as to their hue. Uh, you, you can see that all those variations in the other one, but I think this one probably is a little bit clearer to see. So, there's, that was the triad scheme. We also have the scheme we call the complementary scheme. And those are colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. And this one can kind of show you that. So now here, with uh, uh, this particular color scheme of the, blue, the yellow, yellow orange and blue violet. Those two colors, only colors you use on the color wheel, plus white, are going to give you all these variations, plus all the variations in value you can get. And you can get color harmony. You can build a really beautiful painting just by using two colors that are complementary of each other. You simply call it a complementary scheme. Now, there's, there are several schemes. There are actually, there are 12 schemes. But I'm not going to go into the 12 schemes. I'm going to just show you, uh, I'm just want to show you some of the flexibility and variations on which you can, uh, with which you can use this gamut mapping idea. And uh, another one is called the split complementary scheme, and that simply means if you find a complement, let's just go to the white, to the yellow, for example, like that. Let's so get that to stay there. Okay, we go to the yellow. Let's move that over just a little bit more. Now, the complement of yellow is violet. When we have a split uh, complementary scheme, we go to the either side of one of those and choose those colors. So, for a split complementary scheme of this set, yellow and violet, one option is yellow plus blue violet plus red violet. So that gives you a little bit more possibility. And then you have all those colors that are in between. Uh, another way to do that is to do it the other way around. Where you have violet. Let me just get that aligned for you there. Alright, where you have violet. And instead of yellow, you go on either side of yellow. Somehow it doesn't want to stay put. Uh, so you have yellow orange and uh, yellow green. Those two colors plus Violet can give you a wonderful scheme, uh, and you can move that around. That also is a triad scheme uh, because, that, because it has three colors. But we can move that around and begin to see. Let's go back to let's go to the um, let's go to this one for example. Now there's the yellow, orange, yellow, green, purple, or violet, and you can see I could you can twist it. Now all here, all these in here are your possible mixtures when you're using just those three colors of hue and then in addition to that for every single one of these you have the lighter lights and the darker darks so that is another triad scheme now there are several triad schemes but any one of those uh, any way you arrange a triad choice of colors is going to give you color harmony so those are the, uh, the triad schemes and the complementary schemes are two of the majors. Now there's another one I don't have a I don't have a map for, but though that would be a tetrad scheme where you would choose four colors. Uh, in that case you would go if you were doing a complementary thing, you would take the two on either side on both sides. That would be a double complementary a double split complementary scheme and that would be tetrad. That and then you have all those colors in between. Now you can do you can do other things like pull in a bit and do minor things uh, where you're including lots and lots and lots of uh, less saturated colors. For example, you can make smaller maps like this one and you can move it around and here, okay, we would take, take a highly saturated green then we take a lower saturated red, uh, leaning a little bit to red violet there and the lower saturated uh, blue green and here is our gamut these are the hue mixtures that we would get from that these would be the colors we would use some people call those a different kind of primary I don't want to use that language because I think it's confusing 
So I like to use a feeder color. Uh, these are the colors that feed all the other colors that you're going to have. So we would cut, we could twist that around as you can see, and you can move that, move that in any direction, move this, this and that in any direction for making your choices. And then you get completely new choices. You can have all the choices can be slightly saturated or slightly unsaturated as we have here or they can move you can move it over in this direction like this and have more more saturated hues these less saturated you're still going to get some neutrals in here it's a fun thing to play with and um there have been let me get one more of these there have been artists who've taken one scene and painted that one scene with as many gamuts as they can come up with based on a gamut mapping system. One more, all this does is shrink the triangle. It's a smaller triangle. So if we take a smaller triangle and put it in the center, now we see we have a scheme of unsaturated, relatively unsaturated colors. They have, some are more saturated than those. But you get a low, a, a low saturated scheme. This way we still got lots and lots of hues get lots of value variations and so of course you can turn move that around in whatever way you choose so you could move it towards you get one one that's totally saturated and the others not you can move it, move it around in whatever way you would choose to get your gamut of colors so the gamut any selection of any uh, selection of colors that you would choose that would fall into a scheme the mapping is how you would limit that how you would show how those fit in uh, when you're using that scheme. You can use transparencies like these and just take a permanent marker and create your little shapes choose to choose your schemes or choose your uh, gamut. You can have them smaller. You could choose a gamut that's right up here just in the neutrals. That would be really wonderful for, wonderful for a winter scene to have something that just lives right in here, right in the neutrals. Or you could go up into a single area where you get an analogous scheme where you have more neutrals. You want maybe not have any cool showing, but this would be the neutral will be your coolest hue or coolest, yeah, coolest color, let's call it because it's hue plus, uh, plus complement. But this would be a warm scheme, a warm gamut, and your map would be whatever shape you take away from that. In other words, wherever you limit that would be the map. Uh, and can you see how that can work? Uh, these are just little visual aids. They're just little ways of helping you narrow down possibilities. And then within those narrowing downs, uh, you explore possibilities. So uh, that's Gamut Scheme. The transparencies, you can get probably almost any office supply store. And uh, you the transparency straight edge and a permanent marker. You can just make all the gamuts, you, all the mapping gamut maps you want and come up with all different kinds of gamuts. Oh, by the way, you can go on, uh, just Google chroma wheel and you probably find something like this where you have all the uh, all the variations of primary, secondary, tertiary colors that move gradually around the wheel like this and also into a neutral there if this is what you want. You can go to our website at dianemize.com at the top, click on free stuff, and you can find this one, which I think is the clearer one, although it doesn't visually show you all the possibilities, but I think it's a, it's a clearer one for understanding how it works. Uh, this is called the intensity wheel. Uh, so I think it may, may be called the uh, six degree intensity wheel, but anything that's got the word intensity in it will we'll we'll pull you into this. This is free. Put it in the cart, check out, you won't be charged, and, uh, and then you can print it if you like and enjoy the whole process of gamut mapping. Be sure and view all of our quick tips. And while you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to dynamize.com where I have full-length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.